Howdy swim fans, here with another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're talking about the different energy zones in swim training. Now an energy zone is simply the different intensities that you'll have across sets, set groups, and throughout a workout. Understanding training zones, or energy zones as it's often called, is super important because there are different pathways for your energy to be recycled in your muscles throughout an entire swim workout. Now, those three different energy recycling pathways are non-aerobic metabolism, anaerobic metabolism, and aerobic metabolism. But we don't want to get too much into the weeds of the human physiology. Let's see how these actually apply to a swim workout. Now, if we look at the different energy zones, there are seven main zones. And we can actually split apart these seven zones into two distinct categories. So we have our aerobic zones and then our anaerobic zones. And as you can see in the naming conventions, EN represents endurance. These are more on the endurance side of things, lower intensity for a longer duration of time. And then you have SP, which represents sprint for the anaerobic zone. So this is producing lactic acid, higher intensity for a much shorter duration. So as we look at our seven zones, and let's go through them really quick. So you have REC, which is short for recovery. This is the most, uh, this is the first zone, it's the lowest heart rate, and we'll talk about how these correspond to the different heart rates, the naming conventions, and example sets for each of them. After recovery, you have EN1, EN2, and EN3, Endurance 1, Endurance 2, Endurance 3, and these four round out the aerobic zones. If we look at the anaerobic zones, SP1, SP2, and SP3, Sprint 1, Sprint 2, Sprint 3, these are our anaerobic zones, higher intensity. You might often see the different zones in only five categories rather than seven, and that's because the recovery and endurance one are often so similar these two will be grouped into one energy zone and sp2 and sp3 are very similar and so they'll often be grouped into one zone together and you'll have only five zones instead of seven uh, for this example we're going to stick with the seven different zones and to simplify this what we've done in the my Supro application and oftentimes you'll see this in sports outside of swimming you'll have a color or you'll have a different name assigned to each of the different zones. And actually, John Urbantrak, former head coach of the University of Michigan, decided to assign colors to each of the different zones so that athletes could have a better feeling on understanding of which zone they should be hitting in a particular swim set. And so the naming conventions we have in the My Swim Pro application Recovery is simply called easy. It's a very simple swim. Uh, the distance is variable. Oftentimes, the recovery in EM1 will be like your warm up or your cool down. You know, oftentimes, your heart rate as a percentage of total max is less than 70%. Um, the work to rest ratio isn't really that relevant because you're normally only doing one of these as a repetition. So, you might do you know, a 600 uh, easy warm up. And then if we move into EN1, this is called moderate in the My Swim Pro application. And oftentimes uh, these are longer sets uh, in duration. So you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 meters. Your heart rate is a little bit higher than in the recovery zone, anywhere from 70 to 80%. And then your work to rest ratio, typically you'd be doing anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds rest. Again, you're swimming in a longer duration. You're not really physically taxing yourself that much. An example set might be six, four hundreds on about 10, 15 seconds rest, something that you can sustain for a very long period of time. Now, EN2, as we call it, endurance in my swim pro, um, you know, these are sets anywhere from 600 to 2,000 meters. So it's a little bit shorter than the EN1. Intensity is a little bit more elevated. You're looking at a heart rate anywhere from 80 to 90% effort. So you can sustain this for a relatively long period of time, but you're putting in work. And so an example set might be four 300s freestyle, taking only about 15 seconds rest. And then the next uh, zone is EM3, and this is your threshold zone. So this is what people often refer to as a short rest set. So you're really maxing out your aerobic energy system. You're at the top end of the aerobic zone. You're, you know, these sets are only 400 to 1600 meters. You're pushing about 90 to 100% of your heart rate max. And an example set might be four 150s freestyle on about 20 seconds rest. 
Oftentimes, people are pushing the short rest even harder. So you might do six 100s freestyle where you're only getting five seconds rest. So if you're an elite swimmer, you might be doing six 100 freestyle on the 110 and you're only getting three or four seconds rest. So that would be your threshold EM3 zone. And as we move from the aerobic zones into the anaerobic zones, this is where the intensity is really amplified and the set duration is really shrunk down. So you're not really swimming for as far of a distance, but you're pushing yourself much harder and you're focusing on applying a lot more power and intensity and tempo into your stroke. So SP1, we refer to as best average. And this is, you know, a set is anywhere from 200 to 600 meters. An example set would be 650's best average on the minute. And your goal might be to hold under 30 seconds or maybe even holding like a 200 pace or a 400 pace if you're racing in competition. Work rest ratio is anywhere from two to one to one to one. So you might do six 100s on the 130 and your best average and you're trying to hold under a minute. Just as an example, your heart rate is anywhere from 95 to 100%. That's the goal of what you're trying to hit during the set. So oftentimes, best average is one of the most uncomfortable training zones to be in because you're pushing yourself so hard, but you also are not getting that much rest at the same time. Now, SP2 is referred to as race pace. This is where you're really trying to max out your body in terms of speed and intensity. So you're pushing that 100% heart rate. Work to rest ratio is anywhere from one to two, one to four. So an example set might be 450's race pace on the 130. So again, if your goal is trying to go under 30 seconds, your work rest ratio would be one to three, and you're really trying to push yourself to achieve race pace performance. Now, the last set, which is sprint three, is called sprint simply. And this is really, the only differentiator between sprint and race pace is in the duration. So if we look at the example set, 425 sprint on the minute. Oftentimes your work to rest ratio will be one to three or one to four. And this, if you notice, is a little bit shorter distance total than the race pace set. So a race pace set of 450s, you're really trying to max out your effort, but you're maybe only going about 99% of your true potential because you're trying to hold everything together. Whereas a 25, you are absolutely maxing out your body 100% of your heart rate effort, and you're trying to produce true speed. And ideally, you cannot even achieve this for more than 15 to 18 seconds anyway if you're going your absolute all-out max. And that's the goal of SP3, achieving a little bit more neuromuscular um, reinforcement and really maxing out your body both physically and mentally. And if we look at the different zones, it's really important to understand that the zones bleed into each other. So there's no hard determination. If you were to do a set of four 300s freestyle in a particular zone, you know, it doesn't mean your body might not shift into the different zones across a different workout. And you might see sets where you actually start in one zone and you'll descend into another zone. So you might do a set of 650s where you start at SP1 and you're going to finish at SP3. And you're basically descending from SP1 to SP2 to SP3 and maximizing your output on the final repetition of the set. So it's really important to understand how the different intensities can really be applied into your swim training. And that's the best way to improve, is not just focus on swimming in the aerobic zone or the anaerobic zone, but every good workout and training plan will have different elements from the aerobic zones and the anaerobic zones so that you can really maximize what you're doing in the water. And I need to give a huge shout out to the folks at USA Swimming who actually came up with uh, this formalized structure and table so that we can give an explanation of how these different training zones apply to your training so that you can get the most out of your swimming experience. So if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy swimming.